Hello everyone. Welcome to another Incarnate live stream. My name is Mati. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a perspective battle map. Now if you're not familiar with what a perspective battle map is, I do have some examples. I'll go ahead and show those to you. We're going to be making maps like this, something a little bit more basic, but I'll be showing you how to put perspective to your battle maps. And in this style, we're obviously using fantasy battle maps since it's halfway there. And then there's also this other one right here, the Cartographer's Chamber. This one's a little bit more recent. Both of these maps are available on my profile for you to clone and edit and to use for personal use. So definitely check those out. Now before we jump into how to make perspective battle maps, uh, I have one real quick announcement. If you go to the bell at the top right hand corner, you'll notice that there's a core packs and art manager. They have, we have some exciting updates in the works. We'll be creating and expanding the capabilities of custom uploaded art. To prepare for this, we are reorganizing our free art into a single core pack for each style. Stay tuned for updates on the new art manager. So that's the only real news that I have to share, only announcement. Now, if you want to follow along in today's stream, you're going to want to clone and edit this map. That link will be provided in the chat. So go check that out. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. While it's loading, I'll have you guys also go ahead and just clone and edit that map. Hey, hey, Musical Rogue. Hey, Callan's Compass. Welcome. I love you both. So glad that you guys are here to join me on this one. I'm super excited about today's stream. Perspective battle maps are so much fun. They can really add a little bit of spice to your map and to your campaign. They're great for boss battles, great for one shots, and other such fun things like that, or just to spice up your gameplay in general. Let's just say you just want to have a random battle map with a little bit of perspective in it, so that that way you can, uh, you know, give it a little nice visual for your players. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hope that everyone has cloned and edited the map. If you haven't cloned and edited and you want to use another map that you want to follow along with, that's fine. Just know that you need to use the fantasy battle map style because, like I said, that's halfway there when it comes to perspective. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to go ahead and remove the title here. One of the first things that you want to do when you're putting together a perspective battle map is you want to turn on your grid. The grid is extremely helpful. It's a technical tool. It's great for spacing, aligning things, or if you want to use it to make shapes with the mask tool, which is exactly what we'll be doing in this stream. We're going to be using the add mode of the mask tool and the subtract mode of the mask tool in junction with the grid block shape to put together our walls and our floor. Now, before we jump into that, I just want to explain just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit about perspective because what makes making a perspective map a little bit easier to make is understanding the concept of perspective. First things first is that you, when I make a perspective map, I start by making the floor and I've used the path tool to create a wireframe and I've used the wireframe with the path tool against the grid to create my shapes. This is a great little exercise, <clears throat> excuse me, to get yourself started and to figure out the basic shape of your floor or your room. Once you've made your floor, you probably are wondering, well, how is it that I add perspective to that? How do I add perspective? So first you have to talk a little bit about what's something that's called a vanishing point. A vanishing point is where parallel lines converge to create the vanishing point. That's going to be where those lines are and that kind of connect into the center there. That is going to be your vanishing point. So this right here is your vanishing point, right? And you'll see here that I'm going from each corner here going in and those, those lines inter intersect and that is the vanishing point. So it's not complex, pretty easy stuff. Now, how is it that I apply perspective? Now that I have this vanishing point, how do I apply walls to that? So what I would do is that now that you know where the vanishing point is, you know that you can build off from your floor, go outward to create your wall. And it's not complex. What you need to do is to just create the same shape that you did that, that was the floor. So this shape right here, all I did was just copy and paste this square shape right here and I just blew it up and make made it bigger just going right outside of it like that and then I connected the two using <clears throat> lines going from each corner like this and like that so this is we're basically creating a box here so this is the kind of concept that you're going to be working with when you're making your perspective battle maps. It's a good start to start with your floor first 
because that's the space that your players are going to be interacting with the most. Walking, attacking enemies, going in and out of doors. Your wall space should be much smaller than your floor space because you don't want to take up too much room with the walls. You want the majority of the space <clears throat> in the room to be the floor, of course, always. So now that you have some little bit of concepts about perspective, having a vanishing point, it's a little more complex than just this, but these are the essentials you'll need if you want to create perspective battle map in Incarnate. Okay, so now that you have a little bit, I know a little bit about perspective, we can go ahead and talk about, move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my FG and BG layers. I'm going to let those turn on real quick. It might take a moment. All I did was just turn them off in the layer section. You'll see that there's some eyeballs with a cross, little thing across it. That's just letting you know that it's visible or not visible. So all I did was just turn those on. So remember the concept we talked about in that little perspective guide, right? I've created my, my room floor first. And then from there, I created the wall. And then that black is the top of the wall. Now, how is it that I, how is it that I did that? I used the mask tool in junction with the grid tool. So super easy to do. And all I did was just made the floor, the FG layer. And then I also made the black rim, which is represents the top of the wall, that black frame around it. That's also made with the add mode of the mask tool. Check out what happens when I try to put a texture going across like this. Notice that it only goes on the two parts that are the FG while the BG is left alone. The reason why I've separated the layers to make a wall and the floor is because it's that way when you go to paint the two, you're not going to accidentally paint over onto the wall if you're painting the floor or vice versa. So very, very helpful to use the mask tool in this way to separate the, the wall from the floor, very easy to paint, and it's not complex. So that's how you'd work with the FG. So if this, if the um, floor and the top of the wall are the FG, well, clearly that means that the wall is the BG. So now that you know the difference between the two layers, you can now paint them separately. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and keep moving along. We have a lot to do today, so let's go over all of it. So what comes next? After you've done that, I love to use the path tool to create my line work. So it's not too complex. You can use the segments, make your path black, add a black shadow. And with what's really cool about segments is if you hold down the shift key like this, it will do certain degrees. And so all I did was just start in one corner like this and then go down into that next corner. And then I just copied and pasted and rotated that to connect each one. So path tool, mm, it is, it is chef's kiss. Absolutely helpful. And so you were kind of putting together the wireframe of the room, right? So that wireframe is helpful because now we've added perspective to it. When you turn off that line work, it just looks like a bunch of rectangles and kind of a black frame around it, right? But once I've added that line work or that wire work, boom, there goes the lines. And again, that shadow with the path tool, that shadow makes it look like those corners are dark. And that's really nice. Also notice that the mask tool also has some, a stroke, a black stroke to match with the black path lines and an outer and inner shadow that makes it look like there's a little bit of a shadow going at the top of the wall and the bottom of the wall. And that looks really, really nice. Of course, we'll be adding way more shadowing and lighting as we go along. Hey, first time chatter, dwarves and dragons. Really glad that you're here. Sweet. Okay. Now that you've done that line work, we can also talk a little bit about a little bit of a perspective guide that's going to be helping us. I'm not going to be using it right now. We'll be using it later. But the perspective guide is going to help me to understand what angle certain objects that in the room or on the wall are going to be. So that rectangle in the center where it says top down, that is going to be where stamps can be directly top down. You can just use stamps straight from Fantasy Battle Maps and you don't have to do any kind of finagling or changing anything to make it match the right angle. So that top down 
rectangle again. Pure top-down fantasy battle map stamps will work just fine. The rest of the red lines are kind of projecting out from that rectangle. These are going to be kind of a guide to help you to where to place, let's say, pillars, windows, if you're going to be placing a potted plant, which direction should it be facing? So these red lines are going to be helpful to you for figuring out the right angle and placement for the stamps that you're going to use to decorate the room or populate the room. I'm going to turn it off for now because we're not at that segment yet, but at least know that that perspective guide really, really, really helps you. And it's not hard to put together. All I did was just do that same concept. I used the lines. I started in the corners and went into the rectangle and then started putting other lines going in between that and then this lines going from north to south and east to west and that's makes it to where those areas are just going to have no weird angles or anything like that so this perspective guide will help you out if you get lost if you're using this map right now you've cloned edit it and use it just sit, put this on the back burner and we'll use it later when we go to populate the room all right let's talk about making a frame now, at the moment, it doesn't really look a whole lot like Incarnate. It just looks like a drawing program. So we start throwing in some stamps to make it look nice. So I like to first frame my room. I like to use some stamps to help me out. You'll notice some things very, very carefully at the bottom of the room. It almost looks like a baseboard or something like that. That it is darker and smaller. You'll notice that that wooden frame is darker and smaller. It's further away from you. That's why it's smaller. And it's darker because contrast is how you use, or light and dark, is how you make things look further away or closer up. So notice that the wood frame at the top of the wall is a lighter color and it's bigger, right? Because we're using perspective. So that wooden frame at the bottom, smaller, darker, further away. That frame at the top bigger lighter all right now that you've added that what about putting some stamps to also cover up some of that wireframe we don't really need that wireframe there so let's go ahead and put down some poles now poles are really really helpful they're easy to find and they don't they're not square on each edge and so they work really nice as kind of like a pillar or a column because they have a circular edge at the bottom and at the top right so when i when you look at the bottom of the pole, oopsie, you'll notice that it's kind of circular at the bottom. So that works better, right? Just like when you look at one of these pieces of wood right here, they're kind of square, right? And that's going to look weird as a pillar or some part of a frame. So poles are great to use. I totally recommend them. And you can place them all along the wall too to create maybe panels or segments. But for now, I'm just putting them in each corner. So it kind of looks like it's a pillar or some kind of support beam that kind of keeps the room together. I'm going to quickly go ahead and pick a texture that I want for my floor. Remember, the FG layer is your floor. And don't accidentally go over onto the black frame. So I'm just going to use this shape right here. I'm only going to do half for now. I'm just going to take a look at it. Press Enter. And then there's your wooden floor. Now you can make your floor any kind of texture or color that you want. It all depends on the theme of the room. If your room is like a ruined theme, maybe have some stone. Make the floor made out of stone. Add some rubble. Make one of the walls falling apart. Theme is super important because a theme is how you do with every map. It doesn't matter if it's a fantasy world, fantasy regional. It doesn't matter if it's a regular battle map, watercolor battle map city. A theme is always necessary. Okay. Let's go ahead and make a real quick pillar because I think a pillar would be fun. Real quickly, just on this, remember that you need to scale the texture that you're using for your floor. At 100% default, it might not be the right texture. And the, what I did to make sure that it was about right is I looked at those that dark brown wooden frame at the bottom and I kind of scaled it down to be around the same size, at least the texture. So that way the scale is right. So whenever you're adding a texture, make sure the scale is correct and also make sure that it's not repetitive because a lot of textures are repeatable artifacts. And sometimes when you just do a huge fill with a rectangle shape, it can look really weird. So make sure that you blend up textures when you're using a base texture that has a lot of artifacts. Now you're probably wondering why I only did half. I'm going to be putting some stamps together 
And I like to have a section that isn't kind of blocked. It isn't in the way of anything because this texture has a lot of artifacts. It's got some line work in it and it's kind of a distraction. So I'm leaving a workspace below right here that makes it easier to put things together. So I'm going to go ahead and make a pillar. Now, if you notice, I'm using poles, but you can make a pillar using a certain combination of poles and pillar and stools to make an interesting pillar if you don't want to just use a flat pole. So these are the requirements. You just need one pole and four stools. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this and I'm going to go ahead and pick the stool. And what we're going to do is create the base of the pillar first. Pillars have a heavier base and that's because it needs to support the weight of the column itself. So we have to first make the base of the pillar. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this because I like the grain of the wood to match. And what we're going to do is we're going to create two faces of the pillar for the base. Because remember, there's perspective in this. So you need to show several faces. It's not just pure top down where you just see a circle as the base. Let's go ahead and put another one on top. Now, if you made it to the top down oblique uh, battle maps or RPG map stream, we went over this concept in a little more detail. But what you're going to do is you have the top face. Remember when I talked about the frame, the wooden frame? The top stamp is going to be lighter, while the bottom stamp is going to be darker. So all I have to do is just click the advanced settings, bring the brightness down, and it looks a little bit darker. And the prevailing logic is, is that the light source at the top, like if it's a candle or an overhead light, things that are on the top, that top part of the pillar, the face, the top part, face of the pillar is going to be darker, while the bottom part of the base of the pillar is going to be darker. What I like to do is just group it like this, and then it's done. And then we'll go take the pillar, and we're going to put it right on top of it. Now notice that the, that the poles have a, they do have a, a second face on it. So we got to make sure that we put it on properly to where the face, that one extra face is actually facing upward. You don't want the face to be facing downward like this. If you look at the face of the pole, you'll notice that it's at the bottom part. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that the, the second face on that pole is upward. And I'll show you a real cool trick, by the way. You'll notice that the top of that pillar is black. All I did was just take a black path and then just went over the top of the face to make it black. Black represents a part of a wall or a space or the part of a cave that you can't access. That's what black represents in a map. So you can always, if your pillar kind of goes off the map a little bit, you can just take the black path, put it on top of it, and then just put it right over it. So it's super easy to put together. I'm going to go ahead and just take a pole and we're going to put it on top of the pillar right here. Let's go ahead and put it down right here. There we go. Put this on top. There we go. One. Oh, I got a shadow one. I'm going to turn that off. Where are we at for time? 18 minutes. Sweet. Tons of time. That's fantastic. I like to hear that. So this is a pretty basic pillar. This is not complex. I'm going to go ahead and boost the width as well to make it a little bit thicker. There we go. And then I'm going to take that same pillar, copy, paste, and it just or that base, and just put it right on top of it like that. And then you can select the whole thing, group. And the reason why I made it where I didn't put it up against the wall, up against the pole, and then put it together, it's actually easier to put together pieces like this when it's just straight like this, and then you can rotate it. Because if I rotate this pillar and I put it like this, you'll notice that the faces of the pillar are still right. The faces of the base and the top part are facing the proper direction. So now that I put it together that way, I can go ahead and just take this and then just put them on each corner. So I can take this up here like this, and I'll put it up to the top layer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the poles right now. Since we're not gonna be using them, we're gonna use this column. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can make a pillar or a column. This isn't the only way. You can put together tons of different pieces. And if this is a popular stream and people like this, we can always make it a series and touch base on more complex 
uh, stamps. So there's more complex pillars that you can create. This isn't the only one. And you're just going to place it in the corner like this. And even if it's kind of facing, kind of going off a little bit, that still looks nice. I kind of like that. So now all you got to do is just copy and paste. And if, if you want, label it pillar, of course. Pillar, press enter, and then just copy and paste. Yes, marble ones would look awesome. And I can show you that in more complex uh, videos. If this stream is is really interesting to you and you would like to see a series on how to make perspective battle maps, please let me know and I can totally do that because I absolutely love perspective battle maps. They're fun to make. They're a little bit more on the power user side of things because the fantasy battle map style is done in a almost orthographic or pure top-down perspective. And so you really have to finagle to make it work. It's not, these stamps are not built out of, out of box or default to do these kind of things. So you have to work with it. I'm just going to copy and paste those. And all I have to do is just flip them around. This is the beauty of copy and paste. You don't have to make four pillars. You just have to make one, put it together, and then you can copy, rotate, and place them around. So I'm going to put these in the corner here. There we go. It looks good. Let's take it down a little bit more. So you have these four pillars. There we go. I'm going to go and make sure they're lined up properly. <laughs> first time chatter. <laughs> I love that. Hey, other first time chatter, my last and dirty rat. Glad to see you both here. <laughs> well, there's a lot of maps on my profile that are totally clonable. Feel free to take them and use them. All right. Okay. So making a pillar is not complex. It's pretty easy to do. You can make some really interesting pillars. I mean, really interesting pillars. If you can just pay, put a bunch of them, a bunch of those poles together, you can make it look like it's a Greek marble statue or marble pillar or column. So many different ways to make pillars. So if people like this stream, we can go into depth in the future on how to make those. All right. So now that we've made pillars, let's go ahead and make a door right? A door is totally necessary. How are people going to get in and out of this room? Did they just fall into it as a pit? Did they poof, follow a magic circle that brought them in? Or did they just walk through a door like normal people? <laughs> so how do we make a door? Let's go through our door options here. There should be a door in here. We're going to go with the door Rex. Here are the door requirements. Lots of ways to make doors, but these are the stamps you're going to be using. There's an elven arch here, two of the poles, plus a black path with no shadow at full opacity, and two staircase stamps. So these are the requirements that we're going to need. And I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this, and I'm going to go ahead and pull these stamps down. So first step is to take the arch and then take two of the pillars, and I'll show you a neat trick with this. Let me go ahead and bring it down. Make sure that the pillar is below. For now, I'm just going to pretend there's no perspective yet, and just kind of put the piece together like this. There we go. Go down one. My mistake. We'll do the perspective part once it gets to the wall. And then maybe we'll pull out that perspective guide to help us out. Okay, let's go ahead and ungroup this entire thing. And then I am going to go ahead and place this up against the wall. Listen, now you can put a door wherever you want, but my suggestion for doors is to put them in the center of each room because it's the easiest. When I go back to that perspective guide that I had before, you'll kind of notice that the the straight lines going north to west and east to west, that's kind of the easiest place to do perspective. You don't have to turn the angles of the poles quite as much. So putting the doors in the center is easier, but of course you can put doors wherever you want. That's fine. If you don't want to have the door in the center, you can put it on the side. That's a bit harder, but for those of you who are new, this is your first time, doors in the center just make it so much easier. So I'm going to turn the perspective guide to, let's say, take it down a couple layers, and I'm going to bring the opacity down quite a bit, just so it's there so I can see it. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm going to go ahead and place that door up against the wall. And I notice that there it looks like there might be some shadows on these. I'm going to turn that off. 
There's no need to have shadows on these at the moment, so let's turn off none. Okay, perfect. Let's go put it up against the wall for now. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and group this for now. And where is that group at? Oh, what happened to it? There it is. Oh, is it not showing up? Is this it? There it is. We're gonna call it door. Always label, always label your, your groups. That way it's easier to find things. Now let's go ahead and scale it up to the proper size we want. We already have a general idea of what our scale is. Look at the size of the wooden planks. Those are a great indicator of scale. Look at the size of the pillars. Great, you already have some stamps down. Usually the first couple stamps you put down is a great indicator of where your scale is. Don't step away from that scale. Let's go ahead and also make sure, let's scale it up just a little bit more. Let's put it right here, a little bit more, it's a little bit bigger, there we go. It'll be a decent sized door. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and add a little bit of perspective now. So let's rotate this right here, and we're gonna try to stay within the perspective guide. So when I put this pillar up against here, it's not perfect up against that, and it's not perfectly straight in the center either. So it's gonna be rotated just a little bit, and we're gonna find the right angle that we need. Let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit. Hey, Illyrian Dreams, first time chatter. Glad to see you. Awesome. So glad to see so many people here. I was really excited about this stream. This is going to be a really fun one. Perspective battle maps are just so cool to make. I love making them. Let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit more. There we go. There we go. Nice. Okay, so now we have the door a little bit right. Use that perspective guide to help you out, and it can also help center out. Let's put the top, the very peak of the arch. Let's put that right, center that with the line. Perfect. Okay, fantastic. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to also take some stairs. I'm going to go ahead and copy, open up this. I'm going to copy, paste it, and put it down like this. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller. Okay, now you're probably wondering, what am I going to use the path tool for? What is the black path for? Well, what's great about the black path tool is, is that you can use it to represent an open window, a doorway, because black just represents void, like a fog of war. And I love to use that in my doors and in my windows, because you don't really know what's there, right? So what you should do, whenever you're working with the path tool, you should scale things down, because the five size is not big enough. So I'm gonna show you how I do this. Let me go ahead and turn off the blur, the intensity. Let me look at the size of it. That is really small. There's a lot to fill in right there. So what I like to do is to go ahead and just scale it down to be a lot smaller. There we go, now it's scaled down. Let's also turn off the shadow layer here. Let's go ahead and take that black path. Make sure that it's set layers below the arch and the pole because you don't want it sticking out. So if I place this over like this, we'll go over. I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in that space with black. Remember the path is below, should be behind it. There we go. Okay. You notice that the path is behind it and you have this nice black kind of void that takes you to uh, inside the, the, the doorway. The next step is, is that it looks kind of weird because you have this brown, remember there are two staircases. So I'm gonna copy and paste the same staircase, put it on again, but this time I'm gonna bring the brightness down a little bit. So I can go to filters and bring the brightness down. And what that looks like is it looks like the, sh the shadow from the arch or the shadow, it looks like that staircase is going in to the doorway and then it's also getting darker as if it's receding into the shadows right so having a dark having a dark staircase and a lighter one makes it look like this this nice little illusion okay there we go and i'm going to go ahead and group i'm going to go ahead and delete all this stuff perfect there we go now it doesn't matter where on earth where on this map I place this door, it will always be black because I put that black path there. 
And if you instead wanted to paint the black, you could totally do that, but you'd have to repaint it every time you move it. So the black path, again, is a great way to make some black um, kind of fog of war for your doors and windows. Let's go ahead and just scale it up a little bit more. I don't mind making it fairly big. That's fine. Let's just take a step back. Whenever you make something and you scale it, take a step back to see how it looks overall in comparison to the overall room, right? Looks good. I like it. I'm at 117 changes. I think I should probably save it. So let's go ahead and save. It's getting a little toasty in here. I'm going to take off my sweatshirt and we're going to keep going. This is getting fun. Pillars look good. I like the frame. That perspective guide is going to help us out. The door looks good. And we're going to keep adding some more stuff. We're also going to make a window. And I think a window would be great. Let's throw in a window. We're going to let it save. We're going to go do windows. And we have a little bit left. We've got to add tables. We're going to add some stools. We're going to do details, potted plants. we got lights and shadows. All kinds of fun stuff coming up. And of course, filters, because filters are a must. So we still have a lot more to cover in the next 30 minutes. So as soon as it's done saving, we're going to jump right back in and get going. I think a second one, another one, a little more complex, like maybe we should consider having maybe some advanced streams in comparison to some beginner streams or something. This is kind of just a beginner stream for perspective. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and put down a window. Okay. And the same concept that I did the black path in that fog of war or in the stairwell at or doorway, it's the same thing with a window. I'm gonna go ahead and take a window. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on this. There we go, here are our window recs. Requirements, not complex, two poles, black path, and four of the wooden walls. So we're gonna first start by making some windows, a window sill, the top of the window frame, and the side of the frame. And then we're just going to paint it in black. You could throw in window panes and things like that if you wanted to, but we're just going to start with a very, very basic, very, very basic window. Nothing, excuse me, complex. I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup the windows. And we are going to get go to town on this. So first step, let's make the window sill. The way that I'm going to make a window sill is not hard. Let's turn off that shadow. And just like with that stool, you need two, right? So let's go put down this. That'll be the darker one, copy paste. Let's make a little bit of a lighter one on top. There we go, it looks nice. And let's flip it around because I see that there is a knot in the wood, a knotty wood there. And we're going to flip it around like this so that I don't accidentally have the two knots stacked on top of each other. It looks kind of odd, right? There we go. So this is going to be the part of the windowsill. Let's make the bottom one just a little bit darker, I think. There we go. It looks a little better. There we go. And let's make the top one just a little bit brighter. Not too much, just a, just a hair. Let's go up maybe a couple. There we go. And we can also stretch it out if you want to make them a little bit longer, if you'd like. And then we're going to go ahead and copy and paste, and we're going to put some pillars on top. Remember, we're making the frame of the window. Put one right here. In fact, I think that might be a little too wide. Let's go back to the original. It's a little bit shorter. There we go. And of course, you definitely want to copy and you want to group this and you want to copy and paste it because we're going to use it later at the top, as the top of the window. So let's go ahead and bring this up in size. For now, I'm not going to add any perspective. For now, I'm just, just like the door, I'm just going to put it together and then put it up against the wall and then I can manipulate manipulate it to work, okay? Let's go ahead and take this and put it on top. Oops, it's gonna have to obviously go up a couple layers. There we go. Nice, there we go. And of course, we're gonna use that black path, right? We're gonna use a black path. We're gonna make sure it's a layer below. Let's just go make sure that it's below. Perfect, there we go. That is correct. Let's obviously bring the scale down really, really, really small. So that, that way it doesn't take too long to fill up. There we go. Sweet. A little bit smaller. Let's just make it really, really tiny so that path will really, really, won't, won't take too long to fill it up. 
There we go, perfect. And let's go in like this and just fill it in, just like with that door, right? Perfect. Okay, excellent. There we go. Oopsie, gotta go down another layer, I think. There we go, okay. Now I can go in and just group this. And remember, we're gonna call it a window. So let's go ahead and call it a window. Once you've made one window, you can do the others pretty easily. Just copy and paste them. Though you might have to change the black path part because as you rotate the poles to get the anger, anger, the angle that you're looking for, you'll probably have to repath with the black path, of course. But for now, let's just go ahead and start with the easiest ones. Remember when I mentioned that the easiest uh, angles are just dead center of the wall, of either wall because you don't have to do a whole lot of perspective. Like this right here could work just fine. You could rotate the poles just a little bit to make them go inward just a hair. You could totally do that. You can even change the size of this smaller one to show a little bit of perspective. So I can go in like this, select the whole thing, scale it down. Let's scale it down just a little bit. Scale it down. I want the top one to be bigger because remember, the closer it is to you, the bigger it gets. So if I take it this like this, make that a little bit bigger, and I can clearly take this if I want and just rotate it just a hair, just a smidge. You don't have to do a whole lot, just a hair. There we go. Just to make it kind of, there we go. And I didn't even have to change the path. Isn't that nice? So now you have this nice window, looks good. Remember, the center of the walls is the easiest part. I can copy and paste and put down another one. Now, there are obviously, when it, you step away from those sections of the wall, it's going to be a little bit more complex. And we'll do a complex one real quick. I'll put down another one, and we'll put it against this line right here. So let's just say we want to put another window right here. You notice how it doesn't work? You see how the poles are off, and it's off from that red line? So we need to change it to fix that. So how do we do that? All you got to do is just rotate the poles a little bit and change some of the window sill and the frame. So let's go ahead and rotate it. Let's make sure that it's set to the right angle. So I put it right up against here. You see how I'm setting it up? Oh, perfect, that works good. We'll put it right here. Uh, let's say right there. Things are a little laggy. There we go. Let's make sure this pillar is also right. It looks like it might be off by just a hair. Yep, of course. There we go, looks good to me. Awesome, yes, absolutely. Control C, Control V, absolutely. Okay, let's go ahead and put that down, put this one on top, move it all the way over. And you notice that that black path is off, right? So you'll have to redo the black path. If you want, maybe just make them without the black path and then fill them in after that, if that's easier for you, totally okay. Let's go ahead and delete that path and let's do it again. I'll put it right here. So remember that that perspective guide is what's gonna help you out. Perfect. Now if you step back and you'll notice that it stays in pretty much relatively, relatively seems to match with, with that line there. Copy, paste. I should be able to flip and rotate to do another side. Copy, paste, and then put that right up against this line like this. One more, there we go, okay. And then of course, you would do the same thing. You'd make another one against that red line at the top on the right thing, and then you just copy, paste it, flip it, and then put it up against here. And you could do the same up against the wall right here. Copy, paste, rotate, boom, there you go. And then you got your next door, your next window like that. See, so copy, paste. So windows are not complex to make, right? Super, super duper easy. Okay, let's keep going. There's still a lot to do. It's about 40 minutes. We got 20 minutes left, so let's keep going. Let's make a long table. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put that together. Let me go to that. I hope that the window and the door were pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, easy to put together. Let's go ahead and make a long table. I'm gonna ungroup this. And I'm gonna go ahead and select two tables, copy, paste. 
just like we did before with everything else. Remember, top one light, bottom one darker. Okay, not complex, super duper easy. Let me go ahead and put this on top. There we go. And then just take the one below, bring the brightness down. And that's a really thick table. So let's just make it a little bit thinner. There we go. Perfect. All right. And of course, you're going to need two poles underneath. And I'm going to bring the brightness down because they're underneath the table. So they're probably going to be in shadow from the table. So let's just copy, paste. Put one right here. There we go. All right. Okay, now I can go ahead and delete all this stuff and we'll go ahead and group this. And we're gonna call this a table, of course. All right, oopsie, I do not know how to spell table apparently. <laughs> all right, tiny table legs, itty bitty little baby legs. <laughs> hey, first time chatter. <laughs> nice, okay. So here we've got our table. We're going to make that table a little bit bigger. If that's how big your doorway is, then your table is going to be a decent size, right? It's going to be a little bit bigger. There we go. Now, remember what we talked about. Up against the center of the wall is really the best place to put things because it works the best in my opinion. So I could put this table like right up against here and you could delete this window if you wanted to. And I like to overlap it. So make sure that it overlaps a little bit of it's on the you'll notice that it's on the floor but also overlapping some of the wall that's super important if i just put it like this if i just took it and then put it up against like this it may not look like the table's up against the wall at all so a little bit of overlap is really really nice so go ahead and put it right up against the wall like this perfect and remember to use that grid you want the center part and of course those table legs are need to be rotated a little bit so I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate. Oopsie, there we go, rotate one. We'll rotate another one this way. There we go. Let's just take a step back and see how that looks. That looks about right to me, sweet, okay. So now we've added in a nice thing here. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete some of these windows. Just keep some of them and delete other ones. We'll just have a, just be a really weird room. It just has three, weird. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's see where we're at. So long table, easy to make. Tables are fantastic furniture. If you want your players to find something on the table like a manuscript, an artifact, a letter, it could be a will, it could be whatever it is you want, an orb, whatever it is. A table is a great place to start putting clutter and details and the kind of objects or items that are gonna entice your player's curiosity. So a table is always nice to add in a room. Obviously some rooms don't have them, but for your first room, I definitely recommend throwing in a table. Always search the table. Yes, absolutely, 100%. Okay, let's go ahead and make some more furniture real quick, and then we'll go over to making some potted plants and some clutter, and then we'll put light and shadows and then filters because we only got about 15 minutes left. So let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and do our stools. That sounded weird. <laughs> okay. So how was it that I make a stool? Super easy to make. Just two poles and two of these stools. Remember to make sure the grain is kind of going this way because this way you'll notice that there's a continuity in the grain. So when I, you'll notice on the pillars that the grain lines up at the bottom on the top part of the face and the side of the face. That way that grain lines up real nice and it looks like it's supposed to be that way. So definitely recommend that you do that. Let's go ahead and bring it in real close and then we'll take the stools, we'll take this pole right here, we're gonna put them underneath and I'm, when it comes to the stool, you don't have to worry too much about crazy perspective. What I do is I just have them facing a little bit, a little bit crooked. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the brightness down, of course, right? There we go. Copy, paste, rotate. There we go. Oops, and I think I should go down a layer or two. There we go, perfect. Let's push one over here and we'll push one over to here. And in fact, if you want, you could even put in a third one 
uh, in the center. It just depends. Stools generally have four legs, but you could put in as many legs as you want on your stool. I don't know what kind of fantasy world furniture you have there, but just go ahead and group that. And then the stool is massive. That's okay. We're going to scale it down. I'm rotating it. There we go. And I'm going to put the stool right up against right here. And if you want, you can put it underneath it. So just make sure that it's a layer below and you can make it look, add more depth. And if I did that, I would clearly want to make even that top stool just a little bit darker because it is going a little bit underneath the table. So I'll make it just a tad bit darker. There you go. So lots of overlap. So the stool, if it was right here, it doesn't overlap. It doesn't create this illusion of depth. So if I put it underneath the table, it makes it look like there is even more depth. So overlap. And it doesn't matter what map you're making. You could be making a fantasy battle map, a world map. Overlapping is the way that you create depth. So you absolutely want to overlap. Okay, we've done the stool. Let's go ahead and make a potted plant. One thing I totally recommended about rooms is that you put a little bit of greenery in it. Putting a little bit of greenery in your room, uh, potted plants, maybe vines growing on the pillars or vines growing on the windows, all of that stuff looks so nice. You've got that green against that brownish red and it looks super nice. So let's go ahead and make a potted plant first. So I'll go ahead and do that. Potted plant, I'm gonna open this up. You're gonna need a one tree, one pot and two of your stools. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup this and I'll show you how to put this together. We're going to take the pot first. This is going to be the thing that the plant is going to be inside of. So I'll scale it up a little bit. And I'm going to put the plant on top of it. Make sure that the tree is on top like this. And we're going to make it not to where it's perfectly on top because it's not top down, right? It's not perfectly top down. We want it to go up a little bit to show a little bit of the vase or a little bit of the pot. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and take this stool. Oh yeah, you got to have plants. Plants are a must. And I'm going to put, make sure the stool is underneath. There we go. I'm going to change the brightness of it as well. And maybe even the hue a little bit to be the same kind of reddish color. So let me look around, see if I can find that reddish color. We're going to desaturate it a little bit and we're going to bring the brightness way down. Even more than that. Keep going down. And I'm obviously, and I'm going to change the width and the height as well. So let's change the width and the height. There we go. And I'm gonna change the width just a little bit. One moment while I put it together. There we go. Let's rotate it. There we go. Let's see, there we go. That looks good. Let me go ahead and just put it a little bit more. There we go. And make it a little bit darker. Bring the brightness down. There we go, a little bit more. And you see that grain of the wood looks like it's going downward. So it looks like a nice pot, right? Works out kind of nice. And I could, if I wanted to, I could even have it be more of a vase and bring this down even more. Bring it down a couple more, a little bit layer, bring it down, and then put it underneath of it. And this could be like the base if you wanted it to be. I could flip this around like this if I wanted to. And this could be like the base of this pot or vase, whichever one. There we go. There you go. And you know what? Let's add a second face. Let's add that second face. So maybe you might need another stool. My bad. Bring it down one. And then I'll bring the opacity down just a little bit or the brightness down just a little bit more. Nope, down even more. I want to make sure it's very clearly different from that top one. There we go. Perfect. Now you've got this nice fancy vase here. I'm going to group it and we're just gonna call it potted plant or vase, whatever you want. Now the beauty of this is that you don't have to worry about manipulating anything with this plant because I've made it circular and not square. So I can go ahead and put this anywhere I want. I can put it right up against, a great place to add a greenery is right up against the doorway, underneath next to windows, a lot of different places that you can go. So I'm just gonna rotate it just a hair. There we go, copy, paste, put another one. Oopsie, let's go ahead and copy this one because it's a little higher up. There we go, oh, one, one more. There we go. Rotate, there we go, and then just put it right up against here. And we'll put it up close, like right about there, and then we'll put another one 
make sure that it's about the same distance from each other relatively oopsie go up a layer there we go all right perfect so now you have some potted plants let's take a step back real quick and just see how it looks so far yeah i like that and you can make all kinds of different potted plants copy paste we can even put one on top of um the table and you could make sure that it's that it's done right so if it was perfectly centered then you would put it in the center like this you'd have to rotate it a little bit more if you want it to be on the edge of the table my suggestion is to use the um, the table legs as an example so look they're about the same angle so those table legs clearly whatever you're putting on that side of the table should follow with the same angle as that leg so perfect I'm going to rotate it just a little bit more. There we go. So now I have this nice potted plant on my table. I could even make it a little bit smaller if I wanted to. Maybe bring it a little bit farther away from the edge of the table. There we go. So now you've got your potted plants. Easy to put together, not complex. All right. Let's talk about clutter and things to put on your thing. Clutter is a great... Clutter can be functional. It's not just something that you use to fill up negative space, though you can do that as well, but it can be functional. So when I put things down, let's say that I want uh, the players to find a book, right? So I'll type in book real quick. Let's put a book right on the table. And let's put it, lean it right against here, put it right on the table, and let's make the scale proper. There we go. We'll put it right here in the center and rotate it just a little bit too. So it's not perfectly square with the table. You see what happens? Let me go bring this up a layer. See what happens, what things look like when it's perfectly square. It looks symmetrical and weird. So just rotating it just a hair, just a couple degrees, really gives it more character. You can rotate it this way. You can rotate it the other way, whichever way you like. I'm obviously gonna, and I'm gonna throw in some notes as well. Notes are just those basic little pieces of paper. And it's a great thing to use for clutter. Maybe there's notes that you want um, your players to find, a trail of notes leading to the book. I'm going to scale down the note to where it it kind of is around the same size as one page of the book. So I might even transform this a little bit, change the height. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and scale, move it a little bit to the side. I think that's about the right size. That looks perfect. So let's put one piece of paper on top and let's rotate it. I'm going to copy paste, put another one. I'm going to take it down a layer. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put one underneath the table to create that dement that height, that sense of dimension. I'm going to bring it down. So I brought it down just 10 points. So that one at the top is 97. The one at the bottom is 87. And I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit as well. There we go. Now I can create a trail or a bunch of papers, kind of clutter. Like this, let's add another piece of paper. And it maybe even some smaller notes. If I wanted to, I could like maybe make some tinier notes. Sizes can be, varying sizes can make it more interesting. So I'll put some smaller ones as well. Maybe some tiny ones, little notes that they maybe keep inside of, I might have to actually take this up a layer. Let me check. There we go. And I'm gonna bring the brightness back up. There we go. And let's have it just kind of going off the page a little bit. There we go. All right, so now you have a little bit of clutter. Let's take a step back. I'm gonna turn off uh, my perspective guide. We're gonna be ending this real soon. Let me turn off the perspective guide. Don't really need it anymore. So I'll go ahead and turn that off, and I will also uh, finish painting the entire floor. And I want to also mention something about the wall, and then uh, we'll add the light and the shadow. Okay, let's finish uh, decorating the rest of the floor with the full wood texture. There we go. One thing I recommend about your walls is it's really nice to do is to, to paint. If you're notice that I'm using this kind of white texture right here to make my walls. And one of the reasons why I'm using it is because there's no artifacts, there's no texture and on it or anything like that. And so it's really easy to use. It's not gonna get confusing because some of the stamps or textures, if you use them as a wall, they might not have the right angles, the right artifacts, and it might not bend to your will when you want to put those. So just using flat or using textures from like Fantasy World 
or Fantasy Regional are a great way. I'm using this texture to kind of represent stucco. That's kind of why the wall kind of looks like it's drywall. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint some of these walls a different color. So you take that same texture and you just drop the brightness of it. See, I changed the brightness. And you're going to paint some of the walls to just be a little bit darker than the others. And it will get rid of that flat color you see on your wall. So let me go ahead and just do that real quick and you'll see. So let me go ahead and it's really nice. You have these pillars here that acts as a nice buffer. So you don't accidentally uh, you don't accidentally paint onto one of the other walls. So this is really nice. So I painted one wall. It's a little bit, notice how it's just a teeny bit darker. In fact, we can make it even a little bit darker than that. Let's go full. Let's go 70 and just see how that looks. Let me just take a look. Uh, yeah, that's much better. There we go. Nice. And you'll notice a big difference when I paint the walls different colors or different brightnesses of the same texture. It really gives it a little bit of character. It's really nice. You'll like it. Let me go ahead and paint this wall as well. There we go. And then if you take a step back, let me turn off that grid too. We're not using it. So you can kind of see it all without all this stuff getting in the way. And so you kind of see that painting a, two sides of the wall or two sides of the room makes it look a little bit more interesting. You can even paint uh, one to be even darker than that. You could bring the brightness down even more if you wanted to and just say one wall is just darker than the other. So if you want, you could put Let's say this could be even darker if you wanted to. Totally up to you. But I've noticed that changing just a little bit of the darkness on two of the walls really, really gives it a little bit more character. All right. Last, so let's just go with the last two things that we're going to be doing, or last two things, light and shadow and filters. This is an absolute must. So if you're going to be doing light and shadow, you first need a light source. So let's go run over and do our candelabra. I hope none of you mind. This is going to go over an hour by maybe about 10 minutes. So I'm sorry if it's going, being a little too long. And I'll try to cut it shorter next time. Let's go ahead and open up that candelabra group. Okay. Here we go. So making a candelabra is not complex. There's a little bit more pieces. You'll notice that I've got a candelabra stamp. We've got a pole here. We have five torches and two of the stools. So how are we going to how are we going to make a candelabra? This is going to be fun. So first, I'm going to make the base of the candelabra just like I made the stool. I, this is an ongoing theme you'll notice that I like to use the stools a lot for a lot of things. So they're very very helpful. Let's go ahead and put it down. Just follow the thing. What I'm making is the base of the candelabra. For the candelabra to stay stationary, for it to not tip over, and to support the weight that it has, it needs a thick base, right? Just like a pillar needs a thick base to support the weight. So same thing with a candelabra. We're going to be creating the base of the candelabra with the stools. Bring that brightness down. Perfect. We'll go ahead and put this pole down right here like this as well. I'm going to put it on top. There we go. And I might even consider changing the width and height just a little bit to fit to what I need it to be. Let's go ahead and fit it Oh, right about a little bit more. That should do. There we go. And what I'm going to do is that I am going to um, desaturate everything on purpose because desaturating makes it look like it's made of metal. And I can do that. So if I select all of this, go to filters and saturate to zero, it's going to give it a gray look to it. And that's really, really helpful if I want to make it look like it's metal instead of wood. It still has the wood grain on it, but it's okay. Remember, none of this stuff is, the style is not built to make perspective. So you have to, you have to change things a bit, and that's okay. Okay, I want to make sure I group this as well, because I keep accidentally only selecting one. Naughty, naughty. Not gonna, not going to do it for me. Okay, now let's go ahead and take this one. And I'm going to desaturate this as well. Don't worry about if there's any color in it. That's fine because the um, we're going to be using light sources to kind of give us the color that we want. Let's go ahead and place this on top. Make sure it's up a layer. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to scale it. I'm going to use this bar right here and kind of bring it up a little bit more. There we go. And I'm going to place it right on top. Let's take it down right about. Ooh, let's see here. How far can I go? About there looks good. 
I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. There we go. We don't need any of this stuff. Let's grab the torches. Next. All right, and you're just gonna put the torch just in each slot. And I'm gonna bring this, turn the saturation off. I don't need any color in this as well, is either. That's fine if it's just grayscale. Let's just make sure that the torch is on top so that each one, there we go, is right on top. And we'll be rotating each one of those as well once we add it to the table. So let's go put each one. Remember, there are five spots. Just put them right on top. We'll move it one more on top right here. Perfect. Where are we at? Sweet. Okay, we're almost done. Thank you for bearing with me on this. Try not to make these streams too unbearably long. An hour is already long enough. Okay. Now I'm just going to group all this, of course, and label it candelabra, of course. Let's go ahead and group. And I'm going to label it candelabra. There we go. Okay. Now once I've put it on uh, the table, I'm going to scale it to make sure that it's right. And I'm obviously going to have to rotate the base, the, the base, and I'm going to have to rotate the candles to match with the perspective. So let's first, let's just put it straight like this. And remember, we're going to use the, the leg of the table as a guide for what the direction is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up like this. Let's rotate it one. Let's push it this way. And then we're going to take all of this and we're going to put it back this way. And then we're going to take each one of these torches and we're going to rotate it to make sure that they're all fitting right. So let's go ahead and rotate. There we go. Remember, use the stool as a guide. And if it doesn't look right, we can just rotate it just a little. You can rotate the whole thing just a little bit to make it fit right. There we go. All right, so now you have that candelabra there. And let's just scale it down to make it a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be massive. Just make it kind of small like this. And next, you're just going to put orange light sources on top of where the torch or the fire of the torch is. So if I type in light like this, and I'm going to use orange. Because remember, I do want I do want to make it look like the flames are orange. So I'll put one on top right there, one right here, one right here, here, and right here. Oopsie, it looks like it went there twice. Naughty. Oopsie, what are you doing? <laughs> Hold on a second, here we go. Oh, can we do it? There we go. Not sure what happened right there. Let's go ahead and copy paste. One right there and one right there. Okay, all right. Then we're gonna take a yellow, instead of this orange one, you're gonna take this yellow one right here and we're gonna go with the big size. Let me see here, light. Oopsie, let's go full size here. Oopsie, I just noticed I'm not seeing it. Let's save, we're at 200 changes. We're gonna save and then refresh the page. So let's just do that real quick. We're only about three minutes over. It's not so bad. <laughs> Can't believe we did all that in just one hour. Woo! We're moving quickly. Mm. So once the save, we'll refresh the page and reopen it, and then we'll add in the light, and we'll add in the shadows, okay? And believe me, light and shadow is everything. If you really, really want to add depth to your map, then light and shadow is the way to do it. So this, this portion is really, really important, so please stick around. If you can, you don't want to miss this. This is going to be super important. I'm going to show you all kinds of neat tricks with shadows, with the path tool, and some tricks with light stamps. So we'll let this save. Might take a few moments. Awesome. And you know, we're going to be doing our, we're going to be doing new streams starting next month. I got some great ideas for that too, by the way. How to make a globe map, how to make scenes, how to make a castle, part one. Castles are complex, probably multiple, multiple, multiple streams. Yeah, all right, it's saved. Now I'm gonna refresh. It's always nice. Remember, this is an online tool, so you're definitely gonna wanna save and refresh until we make some kind of executable. And I'm gonna refresh, save, refresh the page. What that's gonna do is just kind of remove all the history from the map, and that will make it a little less laggy. 
So maybe after you've done about 400 changes, 500 changes, and this is just the way that I do it, after making a certain number of changes, I don't just save, I try to refresh the page. It's always nice to do. Okay, we'll let this load up. All right, perfect. So we left off on the candelabra, didn't we? So let's continue with that. Ooh, I also noticed that my perspective guide is kind of um, getting in the way. Let me go ahead and turn set that all the way off. There we go. Perfect. I don't want to see that anymore. Get out, of, get out of here. Okay. Hey, first time chatter. Welcome. So glad that you are here. All right. Okay. So we're going to go back into light sources, of course. I'm just going to just type in light. There we go. Let's take a look here. Uh, okay. Perfect. Let's go ahead and take the larger one. Remember, we used the orange one for the light sources themselves. This one's going to be an overall light source. And I'm going to set the blend mode to overlay. And I'm going to place the light basically right about here. And it might be too bright at first, so you can always bring the opacity down. It's really nice to do that. So if I bring the opacity down, there we go. It will still keep a little bit of light. Let's bring it a little bit further up, a little bit more. I think right about there is perfect. Awesome. There we go. So you have a nice light source there. See, that already adds so much, right? Super, super nice. Now let's talk about shadows. Okay. We're going to be using the path tool for shadows. I really like using the path tool for shadows and I'll show you how I do it. I'm going to put down one path real quick. All right. And now it's selected and I'm going to edit it. So I'm going to bring the blur. I'm going to make it blurry all the way. And then I'm also going to go to the shadows and bring the blur size and the blur intensity all the way up. And I'm going to change the opacity just a bit. There we go. All right. And I think about that should be fine. Let me just go ahead and test it real quick. So with this path, you can start doing some shadows. And the reason why I recommend a path is because when you're painting a shadow, you can't paint over a stamp, right? But you can put a path over a stamp. And that will make it look like the shadow is going over everything and not just the FG or the BG layer. So let me go put a path underneath the table, as you would expect. That's where our shadow is, right? So let's go ahead and put a shadow underneath. It might have to change a little bit. It might be on top. So let me just make sure there's the path and I'm going to push it down several layers. So let's push it down. I want it to be beneath the table. There we go. Perfect. Oops. Let's put it on top like that. Perfect. And I'm going to change the opacity just a little bit. There we go. And now you got a nice shadow right underneath the table. Other places to put shadows are going to be along the corner of your walls. At the base of your walls, great places to put shadows. So if I just take that path, what I just had earlier, and if I just put it along right here like this, let's go ahead and put it down. We'll let the path load. There we go. And you're already starting to see a little bit of shadow, right? Get a little built. The path tool just absolutely does wonders when you want to add a little bit of shadow. Now you don't also have to use the path tool. There are other things that I like to use for shadows. Clouds, light sources, all make great sources uh, for shadow. For now, I'm just going to put shadow in each corner of the base right there. Perfect. So there's a little bit of shadow there. That works out nice. And I can even bring it up because I believe the pillar should cover the pillars as well. So let's go ahead and take this, these two paths and bring them up a couple layers to make sure that it covers the pillar as well. There we go. Covers the pillar. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Perfect. Path tool works great. The other thing you can use for shadows is clouds. Clouds are fantastic. Clouds work great. They have interesting color. They look nice. And the cloud that I recommend is from fantasy is from watercolor battle maps. I like the shape better. And so I'll show you how I do shadowing with a cloud. So what we're going to do is the opacity is already at 70. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and go to the advanced settings, filters. Oopsie. What happened? Advanced settings, filters, bring it all the way to black brightness, all the way to zero brightness. 
And let's bring the opacity down a little bit more. That's a bit dark. Let's go to like 35. And what you can do is you can take one of these and just put it right in a corner or a spot where you want shadow to be. So let's go ahead and push it all the way up like this. Perfect. Let's do right there. And let's put another one maybe up in this corner right here, I think might be another one. Might be a good one. What about there should look good. Okay, yeah, that looks fine. All right. And oh yeah, you could also blur. Re definitely recommend blurring that as well. There we go. We'll bring the blur all the way up. There we go. Okay, let's just change things around a little bit. Okay. This looks good. This looks good to me. All right. So clouds work great for shadows. And if you don't like that there's a little bit of some open spots right here, that's fine. It could be reflections from things on the wall, whatever. But clouds, in my opinion, they do work fairly well. The one thing you can also do is to throw in another light source to give a little bit of light in the center part. So right about here should be good. There we go. Right about there, I think, should be fine. Let's go ahead and take a step back. See how it looks. I think that looks okay. All right. Yeah, it looks fine. In fact, you might want to change this stairwell to be just a little bit, a little bit darker. And then the last thing to do is just add in some filters. That is it. Now, if you want more detail about how to do light and shadow, we have a stream for that. And we can even go into an advanced stream about light and shadow, okay? Let's just go ahead and do the filters and then we're gonna call it good, okay? All right, filters. What What's good for filters? What always is really nice, clarity always works well. It's gonna add a little bit more clarity to the stamps, makes things look a little bit nicer. Color filters work fantastic. All kinds of fun things that you can do with color filters. Cool, warm, kind of gives it a nice kind of purplish color into the darker regions, looks nice. Maybe you want a little bit of, you want the room to be red, kind of give it a weird feeling. Maybe you want some overcast to give it some blue. A night scene, if you wanted to, red sky, winter, if you wanted a black and white, one grayscale, sepia. Whichever choice works for you. Personally, I think cold warm looks really, really nice here. Goes well. It kind of brings out the reddish, the reds in the wood, brings out the purples in the darker regions of the map, so it looks super nice. Really like that feel to it. Let's let's bring in some other stuff. You can bring in as well some good textures to kind of make texture filters to make things pop out so you could use a vignette filter if you wanted to a vignette filter is going to add a little bit more darkness to your corners and that kind of focuses on the center of the room that works so okay here because most of the wall is just going to be for visual effect unless you're going to throw something on the wall like a map a painting maybe you want to throw on oh yeah a rug works perfect i forgot to mention that by the way thank you so much Cheryl. rugs are fantastic by the way to use totally recommend using one and i think i had that on my to-do list and i forgot about it oops i don't think i'm supposed to share that with anybody <laughs> All right, let's go throw in a rug here. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever kind of rug you want to throw in, it doesn't really matter. Beauty of the rug is, is that there's no perspective to it of any kind. So you can kind of make the rug any color that you want, any texture, anything you want. I put it on layer negative five. And the reason why is because you want everything to be above the rug, unless you want to hide like a little piece of paper underneath the rug because you want your player to find something. So I could take and I'm always gonna, and I'm gonna rotate the rug just a little bit. And the reason why is because to make look it look like something has been used, been worn, there's been traffic. If you notice that if you walk over a rug a, some, a certain number of times, the rug will start to move a little bit, right? So rotating the rug just a little, little bit will make it feel like there's use. The room is being used, right? Every time I walk across my bathroom rug, it keeps moving around. So it gives it that feeling of like, hey, there's some action going on. So we can take this, if you want, you can put like a little note underneath the rug to make it look like, hey, that's the missing page or whatever, right? So let's go take it negative five here, make sure it's underneath. And there's that little note just sticking out underneath the rug. 
Yes, absolutely. This will be clonable when it's done. I'll be sure to save it, and I will provide the link in uh, the map or in, within the video description when it's added to YouTube, okay? All right. So one other thing you could do is you can obviously add in uh, texture filters. We did the vignette. There's one other thing that you can add in, and you can always throw in old paper. Old paper is a great way to add a little bit more artifacts. You notice how the wall is kind of a flat, uh, whitish kind of off egg white color, but throwing in old paper is kind of a great way uh, to add a little bit more artifacts. Why do the extra work? Why do the extra painting on your walls when you can just have a filter do the work for you, right? It's too much work. Remember, let the tool do all the work for you. Don't, don't make yourself do all this extra work. Trust me, total pain in, in the butt. Let's go ahead and ooh, let's go ahead and open up all filters. For those of you who don't know how to access every single filter, it's easy. Just click incarnate when you go into the texture filter catalog. Click incarnate and every single texture filter will be available. Okay. Let's go with old paper. I'm going to bring it down one layer because I don't want it to affect the light source. I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I'm going to set to repeat and I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit and the size because it seems a little weird. So I'll bring that size down and I will bring the opacity just a bit. There we go. And you'll kind of notice the extra artifacts that are added onto it. Let me see what happens when I turn it off. You notice how there's no, there's, it's kind of flat looking, kind of clean, throwing in that texture, throwing in that old paper texture really helps to add a little bit of texture to your walls, a little bit more texture to your table, the floor, to the rug. Absolutely, it's great. Grain is another one that works just fine. You do have to change it up a little bit with that grain, changing the opacity and sizes. Okay, all right. Well, hey, that is it for the stream. We only went about 16 minutes over. I'm super excited for next month's streams. More than likely, I'll have the new calendar up at the end of the week. You'll know what all the new streams are. I'm super excited about it. If you like this, please remember to go to YouTube and to like the video. And please leave any comments in the video that you want. Maybe you want to have a part two that goes into more complex shapes. Maybe you want me to continue working on this room. Just let me know, okay? All right. Well, hey, that is it. And don't forget, I'll make sure to make this map available as well so that you can play with it, okay? All right, sweet. Hey, thank you, everybody. You've been great. Really appreciate all of you joining me in today's stream. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week. We're going to have a ton of fun. I'm super excited. All right. Well, I am going to go ahead and conclude the stream. You guys are fantastic. You all are wonderful. I love you all. Please stay safe and healthy. Merry map making, and I'll see you next week. Avita Zane, my friends. Avita Zane.